Hi everyone, I'm George Farrar and welcome back to the Jack's Left channel, a politics and history channel for the people of Jacksonville, Florida. I'm pleased to bring you today a special presentation, a special presentation about Jacksonville history, a special presentation called Cool Pictures from Jacksonville History. In this picture from, I would say this is looking certainly no earlier than 1959, uh, this picture is from the south bank of the St. John's River, looking across the St. John's River, across the way at downtown Jacksonville with the old Sears store, the Hotel Mayflower, the Hotel George Washington, the Hotel Seminole, and the newly opened Hotel Robert Meyer. So, there are these cool pictures out there that I see and I get a chance to talk about with you here on this channel. And what I'd like to do from time to time, once in a while, is to come on to the channel, no matter what time of year it is, and talk with you about cool pictures from Jacksonville's history. So uh, I've got a lot to bring you. And in this episode, I'm going to be looking uh, mostly at locations. Uh, I'll be looking at certain moments, and I'll be looking at people as well. So these kinds of shows are going to vary, and I'll also talk with you more about what's coming up here on uh, the Jack's Left channel. Uh, I'll talk about that with you later on. But as you look at it here, you don't see, in this picture, you don't see the, the modern skyscrapers. You see, you know, you, you kind of, you see these old buildings, the, the Robert Meyer Hotel has since been demolished. The old Sears has since been demolished. These buildings have since, a lot of, most of these buildings here have since been demolished. Um, you know, the, the Ball Building, uh, that still remains. Uh, the Ed Ball Building, that, that, that still remains. But the Robert Mayer Hotel, that's where our, our federal courthouse is now. Because that's been demolished. So, uh, now we look at Another picture, we look at the old Jacksonville Veterans Memorial Coliseum, opened in 1960, demolished in 2003. Very much when you went to the Coliseum, you very much got the feeling that you were in the round. And so when you look at pictures of some of these old places, you know, and they're gone, you know, and, and when you've experienced them, like, like, take, for example, this great Lloyd Sandgren uh, picture from inside the old Veterans Memorial Coliseum of, I guess you would call that the control, uh, the control tower up, <laughs> up there. Um, you, you see the, 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 um, the speakers uh, below that. And I was always fascinated, whether I was waiting for the ice show to start, the circus, to finally come into town and to... to to start the, the performance, uh, whatever it was, uh, when I had the chance to look up at it, uh, I would go like, really, I wonder what's going on up there. Is there someone up there and what's going on? So you get, you get these pictures sometimes that will bring back, uh, some moments, some feelings, some thoughts. You get that in this picture, you get a lot of that anticipation. You're in the arena, you're in the round and you see what the design of what they were really trying to get at with the Coliseum. Now, when we look at the what was originally called the Dallas Thomas Park, named for Duval County Commissioner, uh, a Duval County uh, County Commissioner, uh, he was a county commissioner back in the early 1960s uh, for Duval County. This is before we consolidated our government, and uh, so before we did all of that, uh, we had. Uh, specific Duval County government. Now, in time, we consolidated. The county and the city mostly came together, and with some exceptions. And here, we see the Independent Life Building that we now know as the Wells Fargo Center, uh, that uh, being constructed. And you still see, you know, the old Sears. So you see, in pictures, too, you see times change. You see the fountain now is certainly more... Um, well constructed and very beautiful. The river, you see the Main Street Bridge, and 
you see elsewhere, you see the old Barnett Bank uh, clock uh, in the distance. Uh, so really neat. This would be this would have been in the early 1970s. So uh, and and caught at a really nice time where the lights are just coming up in the evening. So uh, it's capturing that moment, a moment of relaxation, a moment of, of serenity. And certainly a moment depicting uh, construction, progress, growth. New things are coming. New things are happening. So these are the kinds of pictures that I see and I try to highlight from time to time uh, on the various shows that I do when I can, uh, looking back. And really, with these uh, pictures, you see, uh, you see progress. And now when we look back, you know, back at... Uh, I know that I had uh, an interest uh, expressed, a request from a fan uh, watching who's interested in Imerson Airport, uh, the Imerson Field. Uh, so we'll be looking at that later on this year. Uh, and so you can get some interesting postcards once in a while uh, from, from years gone by. And you can look at what the depictions were uh, of, these, of these buildings these airport uh, buildings. Uh, so this was long ago, I would say, you know, 1930s, 1940s. Certainly this might, could certainly be the 1940s, 1950s. Um, and uh, so it would have been something to have experienced early air travel uh, coming into Jacksonville before uh, JIA was uh, constructed and opened in 1968. And, you know, in the past I've looked at the rail uh, the old rail uh, terminal, Union Terminal, and uh, that has been a very well received show here on this channel. And you know, bridges open from time to time. We we sometimes we've we've opened up uh, new bridges in our history, and a new bridge that opened for Jacksonville in 1953, in April 1953, was the Matthews Bridge, and uh, Matthews John uh, E. Matthews Sr. was there for his. Um, for uh, his own bridge, ded the dedication of the bridge in his name, okay? A big time politician, uh, state politician, uh, and did a lot for Jacksonville. And this is the procession. And now here we see uh, this would be, I'm timing this certainly past the year 1960, okay, of uh, you see in the distance, you see the Main Street Bridge, otherwise known as the John T. Alsop Jr. Bridge. We see that in the distance. We see billboards. We see this, this, uh, these roads, these cars that we are in the, the truck that we're seeing, the trucks that we're seeing, cars and trucks that we're seeing here are heading towards I-95 South and towards Phillips Highway, US-1. Okay, in the distance, we see the old American Heritage Life Building. You know, this is, we see what would have been newly finished uh, towards the left-hand side, we know it as the CSX building today, the Atlantic Coastline Railroad Building, the Seaboard uh, Airline um, Building, uh, the railroad, essentially the, uh, uh, a building for the railroads. Uh, and then uh, peeking above the trees, off in the right, just on the right in the distance, is the, the, the Jacksonville City Hall uh, at the time. Uh, and so... So you, you again here you see motion you see you see these newly opened uh, relatively new uh, expressions you see kind of the novelty of grass they've managed to preserve even at this point this is again things are different now this is what things looked like you know back in the 1960s and here we are talking about it in 2018 okay and we know that there's a lot more growth to come let's look at differences I love to show contrasts. And when I have the opportunity to do it, I do it. And I hope that those of you who are watching and those of you who are big fans and those of you who uh, either have or will, hint, hint, will, uh, please be checking out uh, the uh, History Jacksonville episode I did back in December. And it was quite an um, exhilarating, exhilarating broadcast uh, re uh, recording out there at the uh, Jacksonville Greyhound bus station. Uh, and here you see it in the 1950s, Okay. Uh, possibly the early 1960s, but as you can see here, you see in the distance, you see the Hotel Floridian. To the left, you see a, a clock, and you see it says Chevrolet. Okay, you see what we, you know, what we 
you know, no, as a bus station, the, the general, uh, some of the general, you know, the building itself has remained, of course, the sign, the very distinctive sign. Colors are different now. We see here, we're seeing the U.S. Highway 17 sign. We're seeing a Greyhound bus. Now, I, when I can try to find contract, and you can see there was a uh, there's a bar and you know all these different things, uh, and you know the old fashioned street lights to the right there, and kind of the simplicity of it. Okay, now this is now when you're doing contrast, of course, you go with what you can take at the time that you're taking the picture. So, so you know you you really are doing the best that you can given what you can, and here. I've done the best I can, given the fact that the Skyway, um, you'll see to the left, uh, that, that, that long uh, extended kind of, it casts a shadow, first of all, over the road, uh, roadway, okay? It, it casts a shadow over it, and also it, um, uh, and it also causes me to have to stand a little bit further, maybe to, to some distance than I might otherwise like to be. Uh, and, you know, trees, there are some trees, we see, of course, there, you know, there is a, a street light, but it's more modern highway lighting, sophisticated, more sophisticated lighting, but you know what, the sign, right? It's more, we see it's more, certainly a more subdued colored building. We're looking at contrast. These are cool pictures from Jacksonville history. This one, though, being December 2017. Eventually, the Greyhound bus station, uh, that will be relocated. It, the Greyhound bus station will be over at the, what's being constructed, under construction right now, be the Jacksonville Regional Transportation Center. So what we're looking at now, in its own way, in a couple of years, this will be history. Who knows what will be here? Will it be demolished? Will it be repurposed? What will happen ultimately with this Greyhound bus station once the buses are elsewhere, further to the west, okay, uh, where, where we're going to be having the new bus station? And, and you know, it, 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 so it's, it's times like this you want to look at these kinds of things. And I have the opportunity on YouTube and throughout the, the, the network to bring this to you. And I also do want to start bringing you more about people. I have many pictures of people uh, amidst great and sometimes even ordinary moments uh, in Jacksonville history, in Jacksonville. Uh, and so I've got all of these different pictures uh, from the archives, lots of you know different photos, illustrations that I'm going to want to go ahead and share with you uh, here on this channel. Now here we see a picture of a lot of men, well-dressed men, in front of these two big streetcars on Forsyth Street. They're right, uh, they're right there in front of, across the street, uh, uh, from the Hotel Wendell, which uh, is now the, uh, it's the old Hayden Burns Public Library. Uh, it had been demolished, uh, and the old Hayden Burns Public Library was built in its place. Uh, along with the old city hall, had been there as well. Uh, that that would that had been torn down as well to make the old uh, Hayden Burns Library possible. And then, then ultimately, uh, the Hayden Burns old Hayden Burns Public Library went through a period of abandonment, and then it became the Dupont Center. So, we have this location. We have all these people uh, on this what looks to be a somewhat rainy day uh, in downtown Jacksonville. And so we're taken to a place, and, and now you can kind of, when you walk by on Forsyth Street, you, you, can, you can experience that moment. Now, I've been trying the best that I can on this channel to bring you the best in politics and history. I'm George Favar, and I've been doing it here on this channel since 2013 and over on the George Farrar channel since 2011. In the realm of politics... I'm a progressive Democrat. I speak out. I call out uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly in Jacksonville politics. Uh, I speak truth to power. Uh, I try to bring out as much information as I can on big issues as they come up. And as I can, the best, I, I do the best that I can to communicate that with you through this channel where we also look at Jacksonville history. And there's a lot of history to bring you uh, ahead on this channel. Uh, I uh, know that a lot of what I've been doing has been very well received, and I greatly appreciate uh, the warm words uh, of encouragement uh, that I've received. So 
History Jacksonville, our our flagship show, uh, it returns in March with a look at one of the biggest tragedies and certainly the most impacting event that's ever happened in Jacksonville, Florida, the Great Fire of 1901. It changed a lot of things. It, it not only sure, it sure changed the landscaping, it sure changed, uh, it sure changed um, uh, the way of living and what was going to be happening going forward. And there was a lot of tragedy, but it, but like a phoenix rising from the ashes, Jacksonville experienced a renaissance. So this show will be looking particularly not just at the tragedy, but at what came after. I enjoy bringing these episodes of History Jacksonville to you, and I know that uh, you enjoy them as well. And I'm going to be all over Jacksonville in the coming months looking at Jacksonville history. And also, I want to invite you ahead in March, I want to invite you to experience Jack 79, Jacksonville in the year 1979. I have been looking year by year at Jacksonville history from 1975 up to 1979, and I'll be profiling Jacksonville year by year up until, up until through the year 1995. Okay, so I'll be looking year by year at Jacksonville. And so I want to invite you to check out these shows that I'm bringing you here on this channel and elsewhere on the network uh, when I can. And uh, so, you know, there's a lot of great moments and a lot of great things that happen. And so uh, this is something that's really exciting. And I hope that I can do more and that you'll enjoy uh, being able to be more of a part of this. I'd like to build a little bit more of the channel out on Facebook for you to provide you with even more uh, history experiences. You can go to History Jacksonville on Facebook. Uh, you can go to Jacksonville Perspectives on Facebook. These are groups uh, that, uh, that are the History Jacksonville group looks at History Jacksonville, looks at Jacksonville history and uh, photos, videos, insights, thoughts, stories, anything you can think of Jacksonville history is on History Jacksonville. And our progressive politics and talk and following what's going on downtown when it comes to uh, leading Jacksonville and trying to do what's right for Jacksonville. That's on Jacksonville Perspectives. So I'm going to leave you with this really beautiful illustration of early 1950s for Warren Bridge going over the St. John's River with what was at the time Prudential Insurance Building. Then it became the Aetna Building. Now it's known as the One Call Building. Okay, We see that in the distance. We see uh, the TV station tower for WJXT TV4 and we see this old Fort Warren bridge a drawbridge we see the 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 um the bridge tenders little building there the old style street lamps the birds we see I95 Interstate 95 this old style station wagon, people out to adventure. This is something, this is a cool picture from Jacksonville's history. And I hope that you've enjoyed this show. And I want to thank you for watching. The best is yet to come. Take it easy. See you later.